welcome back to our channel. I'm Vic and this is Nick and we're with Envy Board Gaming and today we're looking at Whistle Stop by Scott Caputo. This game is published by Bezier Games and is for two to five players. Nick is going to do a quick overview of the game itself and then we're going to provide a review at the end. All right, let's go over a little bit of how Whistle Stop works. I'm not going to explain all the rules of this game, I'm just going to general what, how does this game play? What are you doing on your actions? So these are the rounds right here. So in a round, we're gonna divvy up the, this coal in a two player game that we're set up for right now. I would get two coal, Vic would get two coal, and this would count down to the end of the game. The game ends as soon as we're done here, this last round, or if somebody were to have all of their trains filled out at the end right here. So you can see we're starting here with the green trains and the white trains. I am the green player, Vic is the white player. In, uh, in order, we're just putting our trains out over here one by one, and then the first player will go, and an action will consist of four tokens of coal to move your train. Um, they can move north, south, and west. They cannot move east with coal. Whistles, here's some coal by the way, as you can see how that looks. And the whistle tokens that you can get in the game, for instance, at the whistle factory, and there's other ways to get different resources, but whistles let you move any direction. You can even move backwards. So your, your actions are right here. You have four on your turn, and you would assign what you're gonna do. So in this case, maybe I'll do a whistle if I have one, and I can move one or two spaces any direction I want. So if I do a whistle, I can move my green guy here. Uh, actually, I'll just do this one. And you can see there's no resource that I'm gonna pass through right here. There's a track right here. I'm actually gonna keep passing through. And you have these tiles in your hand. Let's say I'll have this hand, for instance. I'll have these, think of them as cards. I play them out as soon as I reveal a new spot that I can't go to. So if I, and I can adjust the orientation, I'm just traveling along this board, collecting resources. So if I spent a coal instead of a whistle, if I spent a coal, I just stop there and get a blue cube. So those are considered rare. So why are we getting all this? Well, there's action spots in the middle, like these trading posts, I think. No, they call them, um, oh, just these companies essentially. So you're trading these resources. You can see it's red and yellow. You get seven victory points and a stock from that company. So the stocks are over here. Um, in this case, it is American Railroads. So I would get the first stock of American Railroads. I would get seven VP if I traded in a red and a white cube before I got there. If I got there and delivered those resources, I get seven victory points. If I failed to give those resources, I lose two, but I can still go there. And I wouldn't get a stock if I can't pay for it. What you're trying to really do is get to the end. So these give you victory points when you trade in different resources. So if I got my train all the way over here, I would have to trade in these resources and I would get 20 victory points and my train would be able to go any of these spots over here and give me various things. But you can, you can see there's only one train that's allowed to go there. So I'd end my turn here and then I'll be able to move in one of these spots and take the resources shown, my, whichever one I want to assign to it, as long as it's open. And that's the gist of what you're doing in Whistle We are back. Um, a few things before we get into the review. First off, we haven't actually done a video uh, since July. That was Yokohama was our last one we did. So that might be the previous video we saw. Know that we had a couple months off and now we're back. We binged like a bunch and now we're back doing reviews. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that. So we changed the format a little bit. You notice when I did the rules, I didn't go over every single rule. There's plenty I didn't talk about. So we're actually going to talk a little bit about some of the things I didn't talk about in our review. Mm -hmm. Another thing, I don't know if you consider this fan art, but my cousin and her friend, so Brooke and Libby, thank you very much, did thank actually you. a little painting. We put it right next to, you probably noticed, next to the board, next to the box, I should say. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> awesome. Very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. So that's, you can't call that fan art. That's family and a friend. So <laughs> I feel like calling it fan art just because it makes us make me feel cool. Mm -hmm. So that was awesome. Um, whistle Stop. It's a game, a train game that's unlike Ticket to Ride or other train games, Colt Express, different things. Um, 
I'll start with my review. I'll start with my rating like I normally do. I was considering maybe throwing it in later, but I'm gonna start with my rating and I'll try to explain good things I like and maybe why I don't. So my rating for this one, 7.8. So we don't have a telestration board. We actually, that's another thing that upgraded. Let's see what two months can do. I can upgrade these boards. They're crazy, crazy expensive, like a million dollars. Um, so this game, the best thing, in my opinion, I'll give it two. I'll give you two best things. First one, I'm going to call this second place. It's not the best thing. So the second best thing are the turn trackers here. Um, it reminds me of uh, Wasteland Express. Mm -hmm. It has a little tracker that you keep uh, you keep track on your turns to your four actions. I like that. That's cool. Because what you do is you put whatever your action was. If you put a whistle, you put that there. If you did a coal, you put it here. So you're tracking down what you did with your actions on your turn. I do like that. Um, it also reminds you of uh, to draw up to three in your hand at the very bottom. Best thing I like are the upgrades. So these rotate in and out, and I didn't show you these when I did the rules, but I think they're cool. Um, they change the game. They're not going to be the same every time. So in a two-player game, you have four of them, and I think these are pretty cool. They give you victory points, and they let you give you an ability, and it's also cool the idea that you're also putting your coal, so like for this one, you're putting your coal on that same turn tracker, and that is considered one of your turns. You don't just keep, they found a way to, to make it so you don't just keep doing this. It actually is a, an action that you do in your turn. So I like yeah. that, I like that. You mark it down here, and it's just another one of your four things that you've done. So I do like that a lot. Um, and for me, the negatives, the rules are a little wishy-washy. Um, we kind of have interpreted in a couple points uh, that I, I think we think this is right. Mm -hmm. So we just had to play verbatim what they said. And so that's how we played it. And maybe we didn't like that way of playing it, but that's what we did. So like Vic would do something. Maybe she'll explain um, what she was doing that we, we thought was fair. That's probably, that's probably a good way to play it, but that's not how it was. And I can see, um, I guess we'll get into that when you start talking about it. And I can see maybe where they're coming from mm -hmm. with some of these rules. So the game, it just, it's not quite for me. So my rating is, I think this is for a lot of people. I think this game will be more fun for other people than maybe it was for myself. I can't speak for Vic. Let's see. Yeah, maybe we play, you know, too heavy of games sometimes, and then some of the lighter ones that families can play um, don't engage me as much. I mean, for this, maybe. I feel like objectives would be cool. I mean there is objectives in terms of you're trying to get these so yeah there is something you're going for with these resources at the end these last tiles at the bottom where you're trying to fulfill these orders and then get your score your bonus points so there is that but I just felt uh, with this game I scored it a little lower than you I gave it a 6.7 um, for me uh, I just found that it needed, it was missing something. I, I, it was really quick actions though. I do like how quick we could get through things uh, without having to wait forever for somebody. I mean, I know I had a couple turns there where I had no idea where I was sending trains. Mm -hmm. um, and I agree with you about the variant, the way that we played, because I was a cool queen. I had so much coal and I thought that I could just start dropping crazy actions on Nick, but then we looked at the rules and it, it, it not, quite clear but I think that it, we were playing it right when you cannot use more than four pieces of coal for the entire four actions that you have so that kind of changes things for you because you think oh this is easy uh, no problem I can send the train here and get the resource there and uh, laughing but not really not quite quite the case right so and I think that makes sense because what if you had this one like Vic did have where she's trained one coal for two coal and if she just spent the whole turn doing that, <laughs> you're just stocking coal, and now all of a sudden your trains shoot across the board. So that kind of makes Where sense if you have this upgrade. <laughs> um, maybe they can say, if you have this upgrade, you can't do that, all right? They could say, no, you don't have this, and I don't have this ability if you mm -hmm. take that. So that makes some sense if yeah, they want to do that. that's true. Because I kind of like the idea of you stacking multiple coal in one of these boxes. Now you can move that train that many spots, as opposed to one, one, one. Or whatever. And I like how the board changes. I will say that I do like that aspect of the game, that you're putting yep. down the tiles. So you're changing the way that a train can move, or maybe you might even add a tile that, that messes up somebody else's route. 
if they were trying to head one way and you may notice that i don't i don't think there's a, that much take that in this game though where no. you would actually do that though you're pretty much just trying to send your trains your way and not really interfere with what somebody else is doing but i do like that you're drafting tiles or you're picking up tiles not really drafting them you're picking up tiles and you are uh making choices about which ones and sometimes you get really bad tiles uh sometimes that's you don't get anything special and you're just left with these mediocre ones that you have to put down but i do like how the game changed i think that's very unique um to me i enjoyed those kind of games and i can see the value for this game for families and for people who are new to the hobby i think that it's a good addition to have and and the component quality is good too i think that the um the tiles everything feels well made yep i don't think it feels very flimsy so i do appreciate that as well so what vic is talking about maybe um as far as some of these tiles this one looks pretty good because it actually you have a rare one you can get straight through this one doesn't look pretty good it doesn't look good because it doesn't have anything but it can be good if you want to rush to the objective because now you don't have any stops you just have a whole hex you can travel through that's true so that's actually a good good one toward the end i like these um so i actually was happy when i got these toward the end because i can just rush mm -hmm. now i agree what vic was saying i know this is running a little long but we're trying to do more talking um, I agree with what she was saying with as far as objectives. Um, it's not terribly exciting that your objective is to get here and trade in cubes for for points, but that's just us. That might work great for you. That's it's fair. It just um, maybe it's just not for us. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm looking for some kind of pattern with the tracks, but I, that's overkill. It's too much. I, I don't know if that could be facilitated or. Uh, even the stock thing is kind of neat mm -hmm. if you it does okay. add something where you need to have a majority or you can do different abilities which lets you change your stocks so i think that's cool too that's the only like take that in this game i think yeah. is trying to you can go backwards with the whistle and take that stock like oh you thought you had it now you don't <laughs> yeah i saw that happen yep. <laughs> yep 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 both of us i think yeah yeah so that's i mean it's it's a, a good game so seven eight i mean i score it as a good game because i think this would work for um, most people, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe most. I don't know. Do you know how, what the price range is for this kind of game? Um, no, idea? if I had to guess, it's 35 but I don't remember. I mean, those prices fluctuate. This game has been out for a while oh, now. That's true, okay. I can show when this was out. I, if I had to guess, it's, I don't know, 2016, I guess I would say, but 2017, maybe. I don't know. Hmm. I was just curious what a game like this would. Yeah, I mean, it's decent quality. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, th these are nothing special. Like the little tokens are nothing special, but the hexes are good. The art's fine. Um, it looks the colors look good. You know, another thing that's good are these uh, you call them pastel colors. They look like candy, so they look like yeah, you eat them. like little mints. <laughs> so that's cool too. Yeah. <laughs> Let us know uh, if you like this video. Please give us a like if if you like it. If uh, you Do enjoy, <laughs> if you enjoy board game reviews, modern board game reviews, we come out with a new video twice weekly. So subscribe and click the notify button, and you'll be notified when our new videos go up. And if you want to share with us in the comments below what sort of games you like that have uh, a theme like trains or uh, games where you can lay down tiles, if you enjoy games like that, let us know your favorite one in the comments below. We uh. We've been talking way too long. This is like yeah, going 10 minutes. Yeah. So if you made it, God bless you. <laughs> Bye-bye.